Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 28th of February and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 2nd of March and um, I suppose I ought to start this video with a little bit of a health warning because at the moment um, every time I've tried to predict a chart point this week the market has just sliced straight through it so the analysis may not last um, beyond the end of this video given the declines that we've seen in equity markets this week I mean I think what struck me more than anything I think is the complete flip from the optimism of early this month to the outright pessimism that we've seen in the last six to seven days you really really couldn't make it up and yet it's not really a surprise when you consider that the first coronavirus outbreak um, occurred in January and here we are end of February beginning of March and we've overseen the biggest correction or the fastest ever correction in the S&P 500 US markets in memory and the big question now is is there more to come and ultimately I think that's the question that everyone in the markets including myself is wrestling with I don't think I don't think what isn't in doubt is that reports of new cases of coronavirus are likely to continue to hog the headlines over the course of the next two or three months. And the question that really everyone now needs to answer, I think, with respect to stock market valuations, is how much of an economic slowdown are we going to see over the course of the next six to 12 months? Concerns about supply chain disruptions are obviously front and center concerns about consumer confidence concerns about consumer spending concerns about holdups in ports are all front and center as companies pretty much line up now to revise down their forward guidance revise down their earnings expectations for 2020 for the remainder of the year. Obviously it's no, been no surprise that the worst performing sectors that we've seen over the course of the last week or so have been um, airline, the airline and travel sector. I mean if we look at just one particular stock, EasyJet, being a case in point, the share price there over the course of the past few days has been precipitous, over down, down nearly 30%. And I think the big question that you need to ask at the moment is a 30% slide in the share price commensurate with the type of revenue slowdown that EasyJet is likely to expect. Of course, I think an awful lot will depend on the reaction of the authorities, of governments. Do they impose quarantines? Do they impose restrictions of movement? And to all intents and purposes, isn't the cat already out of the bag isn't the hasn't the horse already bolted ultimately trying to restrict the spread of this infection is probably um, pretty much impossible now and the big question is how will events unfold over the course of the next week or so um, it's also next week is 11 years from the low the turnaround that we saw in the S&P 500 and the Dow, the 666 level, 6th of March 2009, we saw the turnaround in US equity markets and since then we've pretty much gone on a one-way visit higher. Of course in the last six days that's sort of unraveled a little bit and the big question really I think for me as we look towards next week, going to be very indices focused and I know I've talked about four minutes about the, the macro backdrop and I think this speaks to the economic uncertainty because at the moment the economic data isn't showing any significant impact to the economic disruption that we're likely to get over the course of the next few weeks. So while we've got companies like Apple, Microsoft, British Airways, EasyJet all queuing up to revise their guidance lower, the big question will be going forward what companies could do well uh, once the dust has started to settle and you could argue that companies like Domino's Pizza and Netflix could actually do quite well if everyone is quarantined at home because everyone will be binging on pizza and watching box sets but that's probably for 
uh, another story. But as we look ahead towards next week, there are a number, there are a number of items that have caught my eye. And one amongst them is obviously US payrolls on Friday the 6th of March. And at the moment, the payrolls, the unemployment data pretty much across the world has been fairly decent. We've seen record low unemployment in Germany, um, unemployment at 40 year lows, 50 year lows in the UK and the US. And the last payrolls report showed the US economy added 225,000 new jobs um, in January with wages growth of 3%. Now, obviously last year we have seen a slowdown in hiring trends compared to 2018, but the average payroll number was 171,000 new jobs per month. So let's look in light of the data that we've got out next week as to what the next key levels are on the S&P 500 because that weekly candle is absolutely astonishing when you actually compare it to some of the weekly declines we've seen over the last 10 years. This weekly decline is probably the worst weekly decline since 2008-2009, the height of the financial crisis. And at the moment, markets are reacting as if this coronavirus could have a significantly similar economic impact on global economic activity. So where are the next key levels on the S&P 500? Well, you know, I mean, I could have I could have given you a dozen levels last week and we would have busted through every single one of them. Um, so obviously the, the, the levels that I'm going to identify now come with an enormous health warning. So let's look at the August lows of last year. Given the fact that we have fallen quite sharply, we're still only back at levels that we saw in the summer of last year. So you need to put the declines into context. But nonetheless, the next key level on the S&P 500 is 2,800. And that's this series of lows throughout August of last year. So I will be keeping an eye on those, this series of lows through here, assuming that the sell-off that we've seen this week continues into next week as investors try and make up um, you know make an assessment on where we're likely to go over the course of the next few days and weeks so that's the S&P let's look at the DAX DAX equally important as we look forward to the price action over the course of the next few days now we have broken a very key trend line from the lows that we saw at the end of 2018. We've also broken below the 200 day moving average. So we've broken a number of very, very key levels. Obviously the breakthrough through 12,900 was a key trigger in the sell off that we've seen over the course of the past few days. And the likelihood is that we could well retest this series of lows. That's gonna be key, I think, over the course of the next few days, and again, that's going to be the lows of August last year of around about 11,200. So, assuming we can't get back above the 12,000 level over the course of the next few days, then we need to be looking at the next area of support, which comes in around about 11,200. If we make that a weekly chart, we might have a quick snapshot at the 200 week moving average. And at the moment, we are slightly below that. But for me, I think really the big test now, given the technical breaks that we've seen this week, is whether or not we retest these lows that we saw in the summer of last year, around about um, 11,200. So that's the DAX. We'll be looking at the FTSE 100 in a minute. What we've also got coming out next week is the latest PMI numbers, manufacturing PMI numbers across the globe from China in particular will be paying particularly close attention to in light of the economic shutdown that we've seen there. At the moment, there's been little evidence that the coronavirus has had an effect on economic activity in Europe, but it's still early days. There's still likely to be significant disruptions to supply chains. So the improvement that we've seen in the PMIs, particularly German PMIs, is unlikely to continue. Um, and as such, the headline number is probably not as important as the internals of the February numbers that we're likely to get. Virus outbreaks that we're seeing in Europe are expected to have a significant economic impact in the weeks and months ahead. 
backlogs in supply chains are likely to be closely monitored for, an, for a, evidence of slowdowns in demand, as well as possible inflationary pressures. Disruptions in supply chains could actually introduce an inflation shock, which central banks are unlikely to be able to mitigate because all of the talk at the moment is talk of rate cuts. And ultimately, you can have as many rate cuts as you like. A 10 basis point in the ECB rate is unlikely to make much difference if you have a demand shock. Same applies to the US Federal Reserve. Looking at the US economy, no evidence at the moment of a significant slowdown there. And yet markets are pricing in the prospect of two to three rate cuts by the end of this year. Ultimately, it's not really, you know, it's difficult to sort of estimate the effects that could have or would have on any demand disruption. So other central banks to keep an eye out for next week, we've got the Bank of Canada rate decision on the 4th and we've got the RBA rate decision on the 3rd of March. Now, the Australian economy has taken an absolute caning over the past few months. We've had the Australian bushfires. Um, we've obviously seen the China slowdown and we've also obviously got concerns about coronavirus. And the Australian dollar earlier this week at its lowest levels since 2009. So big, big breakout on the Aussie dollar. Can we go any lower? Well, obviously, I think an awful lot of that will depend on US Fed um, rate cut expectations. But ultimately, if we look at the Aussie dollar, it's not really a pretty picture if you look at the long term chart. We Technically, we could well go an awful lot lower and revisit levels last seen at the height of the financial crisis in 2009-2010. Not there yet, but certainly I think any rallies back to around about 66.90 um, could well find some selling interest as we head back towards 64 and potentially 63 if economic activity in China doesn't show any significant sign of picking up and the RBA um, starts to become ever more dovish. Let's not forget the RBA has more room to cut rates than a lot of other central banks. So um, with, 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 with headline rates above zero, um, they do have further scope to cut rates even further. So keep an eye on the RBA. Expectations are for rates to remain unchanged at 0.75%. But really, I think... I wouldn't rule out surprise rate cuts from both the Bank of Canada and the RBA next week if this weakness in equity markets continues going forward. On As far as moving back to the FTSE 100, um, let's have a quick look at that. We've broken a very key trend line from the lows all the way back in 2009 over the course of the past few days. We're currently testing a very, very key support level um, between 6,500 and 6,420. Now, why am I looking at that particular level? It, because it also coincides with these series of highs back here in 2016. So there could be a little bit of support coming in between this high April 2016, around about um, 6,430 in this series of highs through here in October 2015, the autumn of 2015, 6480, 6490. Um, again, a very, very big decline in the FTSE 100, 800 points over the course of the past week or so. You know, is that sustainable or could we get a very sharp short squeeze over the course of the next few days? Again, I think it's very much a case of licking your finger and sticking your finger in the air and testing which way the wind is blowing at the moment. Sentiment is really, really fickle at the moment. Um, in terms of earnings announcements next week, um, we've got Domino's Pizza, actually, four-year earnings on the 5th of February. And it's been a decent 12 months of Domino's Pizza. Share price gains of over 30% over the last year, though a lot of those could have actually been knocked off over the course of the past few days. Let's have a quick look at the share price for that and we can see that uh, Domino's Pizza hasn't been immune to the declines of the past uh, few days. Um, significant decline since Friday the 21st of February. It's pretty much a case of sell everything um, on, on that basis but you have to think that um, of all the stocks out there they could probably be well best positioned for um, a significant rebound once the dust has settled. We've also got latest numbers from ITV, declines in traditional advertising, been a constant problem. 
company's been doing better than expected, largely been down to ITV Studios. Obviously, there'll be the effects of the Rugby World Cup, which should have given it a fairly decent revenue boost, while the return of I'm a Celebrity and Dancing on Ice could well help as well. But again, they're down quite significantly, to, quite significantly today, over 3%. And could well retest the lows that we saw in the summer of last year. And last but not least, we've also got Greg's. The success of the vegan sausage rolls, the big bonuses that were announced at the beginning of this year for all of their staff. Sharing the love to a certain extent. But again, um, Greg's share price being caught up in the selling um, frenzy. And, and again, I think the numbers are less important than overall sentiment at the moment. But there's certainly going to be decent support in and around this £20 level in and around these lows. Uh, and just below that, again, the lows back in October last year. Also worth keeping an eye out for next week, we've got services PMIs as well. We saw a big slowdown in French consumer spending in January. So the big question for me here is, will that get reflected in the services PMI number um, for the French economy when they get released on the 4th of March. I'm going to finish up with gold because actually gold prices have actually um, struggled to make gains after the multi-year peaks that we saw um, at the beginning of this week and that's got an awful lot of people scratching their heads. Well actually it's not that surprising because I think you know while gold prices are treated as a little bit of a safe haven when you get the amount the extent of the sell-off that you've seen over the course of the past few days, you will get an awful lot of gold liquidations on the back of margin calls for stocks. That's likely to weigh on the gold price as investors liquidate gold holdings to meet margin calls on the big declines that we've seen over the course of the past week or so. So while you could see a little bit of a sell-off in the short term, gold prices are likely to remain fairly well underpinned, um, particularly if we do get a significant number of rate cuts from the Federal Reserve and... Uh, we do get concerns about if inflation start to take off as supply chains seize up on the back of, a, of, of available product. So be keeping an eye on the gold price and only pullbacks to around about 15.85, 15.90 over the course of the next few days. OK, I've gone on slightly longer than I anticipated today, but there's an awful lot to get through. Don't forget, we do have a webinar on non-farm payrolls on Friday, the 6th of March. So that should be interesting, particularly if we've still got the volatility that we've had over the past few days. But in the meantime, um, hopefully stay out of trouble on the trading front. Have a great weekend and I will see you all next week.